Greetings, adventurers. Before we jump into this weird and unforgettable episode, we just want you to know that this is the fourth part of the exploration of Castle Neritar. If you're new to the diecast, welcome. However, we suggest that you head back to at least episode 23, if not earlier, so that you can enjoy the full experience of our roleplay through this climactic encounter. All right, with that said, are you ready to play some Dungeons and Dragons? Roll for initiative. Where we left off last time, Cesaria decided that it was no longer worth it to try to negotiate with the Bullywugs after they declared her an apostate and attacked. So she called into battle the lizard folk, and all hell broke loose. And you guys were confronted by Resimir, who, after a brief psychic battle with Leaky, lost control of the Dwarven Thrower, which Leaky reclaimed, and then everything exploded in a flash of white light. And, and we all fell unconscious. unconscious. Yes. And that is where we left off. So, Leaky, you awake on a dark shore. The mud beneath you is cold, and the water that you're laying half in is even colder. Above you, you can see a vast and towering dark shape. It's impossibly tall. It looms over you so high that you, it seems to curve over as if it might collapse on you. And it splits and splits and splits and splits endlessly above. And beyond that, there's only a dim, ageless white. But slowly, dark forms begin to take shape. You see Cory off to your left, struggling to her knees. She's lit as if from above, but you can't see from where. And you see Cesaria laying unmoving on the ground. Before you, a vast wall of wood, so dark, seems to cut the beach in half. And as you stare at that root, you see there's stars within it. What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to get up and see if uh, Cesaria is still alive. Okay. Uh, how do you, how are you going to check to see if she's alive? Um, I suppose I should probably try and roll a medicine check. Yeah. This could go bad. So you're wobbly on your feet. Yep. And you have no gear. That is a 14. That's enough to see that she's breathing. Okay. But it's ragged. She's is she wounded. is she in the water? No, she's up on the mud. Okay, but she's not lit. Um, Anybody else? I can't do anything. Yeah, um, I'd like to do. A, I'd like to do an investigation check you're, on her surroundings. Let's begin with a Constitution save. Okay. It was you said I was already up on my knees. You're so. getting to your knees. Okay. Uh, twelve. Okay, twelve is enough to be stable. So you're climbing to your knees. And then can I do my investigation check, just to see what's around me? Well, I'm going to read you the same description. So, okay. this big, dark shape that if you stare at it, you see stars and swirling within this wooden root. Towers and soars into the sky above you. I'd like to go touch it. Okay. So you're walking up to the root? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is it, I did it for, I guess, an investigation check. Um, and I ended up with a... Seven. Seven. Um, so you're investigating, like, staring at it, or...? I'm, like, I'm, I go up and touch the tree, trying to find more out about it. Okay, so as you reach out and touch it, you feel yourself flowing through the root. And you can see, or maybe experience in a non-sight medium, many different worlds branching from this one. So, um, I'm going to... Is it still my turn, or should I switch over sure. to this? So I would like to, um... This seems like, for me, a reference back to something that relates to my religion. Um, so, can, should I share it with people, or should I keep yes, it to myself? Yes, yeah. Now? Okay. So, I think back, and I think that this is the tree of life, and I look up to see if I can see Odin hanging from its branches. Not that you can see from this vantage, but this is Yggdrasil. So, that's what you know. You can tell Leaky or 
So this is um, in in our religion, um, Odin hangs himself in the tree of life to gain more knowledge. Okay. Um, and this is a symbol. This this is a very strong symbol in our faith, or in the faith of Tyr. Okay. So when I look at you, you're glowing, and the light is stronger now that she's on her feet. Okay. But the light does not seem to be coming from anywhere. That part I'm actually not sure about. So we will have to do some more investigating to figure that part out. Okay. Um, Cesaria is not glowing. No, she's dark. But I'm relaying the information. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and I'm going to look at the tree and say, uh, we, I can see that there are stars inside the tree. Mm -hmm. I wonder if like the, the light is showing like healthiness or life flowing through someone. So we should probably try to revive C Cesaria. <laughs> Okay, so I take it that means I'm glowing as well. Yes. Okay. But then, that's that's what I was trying to ask. Oh, I'm sorry. You got, I'm sorry. You're beginning to glow. Okay. Um. Yeah, we should try and save Cesaria. Okay, so we're we're gonna go do uh, another. I'll do a medicine check with Cesaria. Do you have spells for this? Um. Actually, I do have. Is a, this a teachable moment? Yeah, probably. I do actually <laughs> have um class feature which I have not used yet. This turn, or this game at least, which um, it means I have a reservoir of healing power up to 35 HP. So I'm going to go and lay hands on Cesaria. Okay. So you're laying hands on Cesaria. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, I give her uh, some of the reservoir of health that I have okay. built up. So you're sharing your life force with her. Yes. So I will okay. say like 20 HP just in case we need some later. Okay. So... She begins to come back. She's breathing a little stronger, but she's ultimately unconscious. So she's with you, but she's not with you. Okay. I wonder if this has something to do with the fact that we are the ones who share this faith. Possibly. Or are learning about this Out faith. Out in the dark waters, you see something massive rise and slip back into the water. Oh, no. Possibly huge. Can I do a nature check? Um, I think that would be a religion check. A religion check, okay. Yeah, so that so it would be a religion check to see if you know about this portion of would, your would lore. she gain would she get an advantage because she's a paladin of this religion? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mitigate it because of the wuzziness. Okay. Um, I got a thirteen. Thirteen is enough to know that that's the serpent that lies at the foot of Yggdrasil, Jormungandir. So it circles the world and it swims in the sea that encircles the earth. Okay. Learning all kinds of things about North Norse mythology that I never knew. Mm -hmm. So we should um, probably... Actually, I'm going to go do an investigation check on the, the root. Okay. And see... I'm going to go over and touch it. What are, you, what are you trying to investigate with it? If I feel the same power that Corey feels. Okay, I see. So you're looking to see if you can see the other worlds and stuff. Yes. Okay. That is a 12. Um, you don't feel yourself stretched along the worlds in the same way, but you do feel yourself tr stretched in a particular direction, up the route, which directs your attention to somebody coming down from closer to the trunk of Yggdrasil. And it's a man, cloaked in light, um, but he wears a heavy cloak over one shoulder, and you can see hints of glowing armor underneath. He carries a sword in one hand, but he holds the other and cradles the other against his chest. And he's looking at you. Me specifically. You specifically. Corey drops to one knee. I follow suit. So Tyr walks up to you. And he lifts he lifts Corey up by the hand. And he says, sit with the elf. Okay. Tend the elf. I go and sit with the elf. <laughs> well, he's giving you a solemn duty, right? Yeah. Keep her alive. Okay, I go do that. This is a dangerous place. The foot of the world tree is not for mere mortals. But you, he takes, and you go and stand by the water. Or he offers to go with you to the water. Do you go with him? Yes. So he looks at you and he says, You've walked the path of the bear for a long time. But bears hibernate. And you've been in hibernation for a long time. But it's time to wake up. Bears are lonely hunters. And even though they're powerful, they'll die alone. You have a higher calling, if you're willing to answer it. But you have to struggle back to life again. You need to wake up from the winter from this madness. I am willing. Okay. So he offers you a hand, but this hand is the one he had cradled up against his chest. And at this point, it's glowing with raw and terrible light. 
It's not just a hand of light. It is fate incarnate. I grab a hold of it. Okay. He holds up his sword as if to strike you down. But as soon as you take that hand and you clutch it, you're filled with that light. And it burns away everything. You're suffused with the light in a way that Corey has maybe known in the past. And you see a window into another world. And then everything goes dark. So effectively, he just had a come to Jesus meeting with Tear. He had a come to Tear meeting. I had a Jesus. come to Tear meeting. <laughs> so, um, the whole thing sucks in on itself. And you guys find yourself back in the inner ward. Corey is on the ground. Cesare is on the ground. There are bully, bully wugs. I almost called them bully frogs. Bully frogs? There are bully wugs rushing up on you guys. And in your hand is the hammer. Am I standing? You're standing. Is it? Am I still standing with it in the air? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. You're just not gonna have to talk louder. So now that I have the the dwarven thrower once more, which now has a name. Now that I have met Tyr and I have unlocked the true potential of the dwarven thrower, it has told me that his name, that its name, is the Hammer of the Gods. So you've got a dozen bullywugs bearing down on you and your companions. They're on. Corey is struggling back to consciousness. Cesaria is knocked out. It's you and them. Do you remember how to use this hammer? I do. Okay. So you become move... a path of zealot. Okay, that's what I was just getting ready to ask. Yeah. If I move from the path of the, yes. the totem to the path of the zealot. Yeah, you're now path of the zealot, which means you now have divine force. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So how do you have to alter your stats and stuff? Uh, my stats don't change, from what I can tell. Just his resistances and the fact that now he hits things with the force of tear. Uh huh. Yes. Um. Also, you had a vision of a whole other world. Yeah. A whole new world. It's a land of ice and snow. <laughs> it is the land of the ice and snow. Uh, I gain divine fury, which uh, starting when you choose this path at the third level. You can channel Divine Fury into your weapon strikes. While you're raging, the first creature you hit on each of your turns with a weapon attack takes extra damage to 1d6 plus half your Barbarian level. And we're calling it Radiant Damage. Yes. Um, I'm also a Warrior of the Gods. At third level, your soul is marked for Endless Battle. If a spell such as Raise Dead has the sole effect of restoring you to life, but not on death, the caster does, doesn't need material components to cast the spell on you. Which means resurrection, that normally costs a diamond, is free. So if we get any spell casters that can bring it back to life, we can now have a Barak Dondarian. <laughs> the Lightning Lord. <laughs> <laughs> bring him back! Um, I also gain Fanatical Focus. Um, the divine power that fuels my rage can protect me. If I fail a saving throw while I'm raging, uh, I can re-roll it. I must use the new roll. I can only use it once per rage. I have to reset up Leaky. <laughs> yeah, I know. I figured you'd have to, but we can, we can roll with this for now. Yep. So. All right. So I'm immediately going to go into a rage. Oh, yeah. Because now... I am alone against, you said, a dozen bullywogs? A dozen bullywogs with some giant frogs behind them. Great. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go at... Or how far away from them are... Or how far away from me are they? 30 foot. 30 feet. Yep. All right. That was basically the distance everything had been flung to. <laughs> so. All right. So I'm going to throw... The thrower, or throw the hammer of the gods. All right. At the first bullywog. Okay. And that is a critical fail. Tear does not smile upon me. You can re-roll it, remember? No, saving throws. Oh. You're rusty. You're rusty. Rusty, yeah. You're just getting up. <laughs> weird things just happened. Yeah, some all sorts of weirdness. <laughs> things just got weird. Gonna throw it again, and that is a twenty-four. Okay, that's a hit on a bullywug. 
four, six, nine. That's a kill on a bullywug. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> Struck. <laughs> Oh my god. And now you get to gloriously call it back to your hand. Yes. So with that first bullywug struck down, that vision of a, of a window or a doorway into another world becomes even clearer in your head. You guys want to roll constitution, or yeah, constitution saves? If you succeed on a 10, you wake up, you can join the fight. Okay. So, and then I guess we'll do it in order of initiative, so why don't you guys roll initiative real quick? All of us? No, you're fine. You're okay. going first. Um, you so already awake. I got an unnatural 20 on my... Okay, so probably... Uh, 15. Okay, so it looks like this. Oops. All right, so you awake this turn to see him kill to Gly, hammer in hand, swinging it wildly and charging into the fray. Did you move closer, by the way? Nope. Okay. You don't even need to anymore. No, I don't. Yeah, drone strikes. Okay. <laughs> that makes it their turn. They're going to start flinging spears at you. I'm going to roll one to see just generally how much. So, oh, wow, critical fail. Okay. They begin to break before you. Some of them begin to flee. So three of them flee. Okay. Giant frogs blink one eye and then the other. That makes it my They're turn. They're too dumb to go. Yeah, it's your turn. I still want a giant frog mount. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go after... You made me give up my horse, damn it. I didn't make you give up your horse. You guys chose to follow the Brass Half Brothers into the swamp. I'm going to go after another one. This is the first one you're hitting on your turn. It is. Yep. That's a 21. Okay, that's a hit. Oh my god, I miss rolling like this. <laughs> what, like Cesare does every time she gets a sneak attack? Uh, dump the box of dice over? No, I add 10 to every roll. Every attack roll, I am So 10. you kill it. Do you care to narrate your first divine no, no, smite? No, not, not damage. Oh, wow. I add 10 to the attack roll. Jeez. You were wondering why I was like Star-Lord at the beginning of Guardians when we started this? That's uh, why. All right. So, 7, 8, 9... He's dead. 11 damage? It's dead. 11 kills it in one blow. Do you hear it in there, your first smite? My first smite. As the hammer of the gods hits the bullywog, lightning fires <laughs> <laughs> from the impact spot. And it just bursts. Yes. It just explodes into gore. They all start screaming. Okay. And the hammer of the gods returns. For a second swing. Right? Yes. Jeez. You guys woke up to some madness. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 15. That's a hit. Okay. And it's dead. 15 is a tie. 16 damage. That's a kill. Alright, so there's three down. Three in two turns. Okay, that makes it Corey's turn. You're awake, you're aware, you just saw the light of tear. You're feeling particularly suffused at the moment. Okay. What are you doing there, Paladin, with your supercharge? Um, we're going to go great sword some people. All right, she's moving into the crowd. There are a, you know, a bunch of them left. Okay. And some giant frogs, too. Oh, man. Critical fail. Bummer. Well, you, like 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 we said, you you just saw some oh, really weird stuff. No, never mind. I'm sorry. It was a seven. Oh. My seven and one looks the same. Um, okay. So that means I got a 15. That's a hit. Okay. Um, and that did 13 damage. That's a killing one. blow. Okay, and then swing it one more. And that's a 19. And you have then... all your spell slots back, by the way. Okay. Tears and granted just... you a gift. Yes, but I don't know if I need the gift to be able to kill the Bullywugs. But epic. All right, fine. So I have an 11, um, and then I will swing for Divine, Divine Smite, which only added one. Okay. Do I have my rage? So you killed it, and also it didn't use a spell slot. That's interesting. Do I have all my rages back? Yeah. Okay, so I don't need to use one. Mm-hmm. So do I, my max rage is count as four. Mm -hmm. Do I have four or do I have three? You have three because you're now in a rage. Okay. Cesaria wakes up at full health. So you're and right. it's her turn. So Corey is charged into battle. Leaky is just cackling. <laughs> the are, they, are they focused on Oh, they're totally focused on him, yeah. The, the hammer of the gods flying back and forth is a heck of a lot more scary than what Deerbo is, but we don't always How recognize far away from them? Did You're I... within bow shot, for sure. Or you could step forward and hit him with Tide. Oh, we're just going full melee here. All right. 
So that's a 28. That's, yeah, that's a hit. Um, and it's very dead. So 10, 18, 19, 25. That doubles its hit points. Do you care to narrate <laughs> that kind of blow? I walk up and chop its little head off with time. That'll do it. All right. Is that it? That's that's your turns? And then oh, I yeah. disengage and back away. Right. Okay. Okay. So that makes it their turns. Um, they don't have their spears anymore. They threw them at Leaky and missed, so they're going to charge in and try to bite and claw at you. At me? Uh, at Corey and Cesare, because they're point blank. Okay. I so, backed away. Well, yeah, but you, not oh, that not 30 far. Far. So, Oh, that's okay. right. You're still way back. They rolled a 14. Nope. nope. So they miss. It's not going to work. Giant frogs, however, they do come storming in after their bully wug buddies. Their buddy wugs. And you will be my mount. 20, so... A nat an unnatural 20. So it was 8 damage to each of you. Okay. It will be my mount. And one of the bully wugs jumps on the third giant frog and like hops away to justice and freedom. So he's gone. Can I yell quickly, no one loves you? Quit sure. stealing my mount. He doesn't care. He just wants to live. I throw a rock. That's an action, though. <laughs> I was going to say, that's an attack action? Leaky, you've got three Bullywogs oh. left and th two giant frogs. Uh, I'm going to throw the hammer of the gods at the giant frogs. Fair enough. I want a giant frog. That's a 27. That's a hit. Four. Nine. Eleven. I am a... Seventeen? I have to do a Almost lot of kills it. I have to do a lot of math now. You shatter its legs and it flops over, but it's not dead. It's still picking slowly. I shattered its legs. Yeah. All right, it's not going anywhere. I'm okay. gonna throw it at the other. I'm gonna throw it the other one. All right. Eighteen. The other giant frog. Yep. Okay, that's a hit. Fifteen damage. It does a lot of damage, but it doesn't kill it. Okay, that's my turn. Okay. That makes it Corey's turn. Corey, there are three bullywugs and two very incapacitated giant frogs. I'll go for the bullywugs. Fair enough. They're right in front of you. Chop, chop. Um, so Snip that chop. one only was ten. It's not enough to hit a bullywug. Bounces off its shield. Okay. Second one, um, that one hits for twenty-three. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I do sixteen damage. Killing blow. And then that's it. Okay, so Zara, you got two bullywugs left and two incapacitated giant frogs. I thought we have one bullywug left because I just killed one. Three, you killed one. That makes two. So both giant frogs are incapacitated. Broken. Incapacitated. One of them has broken yeah. legs. Both of them have broken legs. They are in bad repair after being hit by the hammer. So nineteen for the giant frog. Okay, that's a hit. Uh, twelve. Good lord. 24. Kills it. <laughs> 27. It two hit points. It's dead. 30. It's okay. Wow. <laughs> it's 30. You okay. shattered its little body. I put it out of its misery and I pet its head as it's dying. It, it appreciates the TLC. The two Bullywogs ever come rushing up on you and they're going to try to chase you away from their giant frog. They miss. Okay. I right. scream. I put it out of its misery. <sighs> Good lord. <laughs> Okay, uh, Leaky, your turn. You got two Bullywugs and the last incapacitated giant frog. Going to go after the Bullywug. I'm vicious. 14? When I hit. Uh, is not enough to hit the Bullywug. All right. So the hammer whiffs past them, yep. comes back to me. Maybe it hits it on the back throw. On the back throw? No, it comes back around. <laughs> That's just, that's unfair because at that point I'd have four attacks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's an 18. That's a hit. Oh, uh, that doesn't, I don't roll that. Four. Bullywog's dead. This it's is over your nine. First turn that's too. 15. 15? Uh, no, that wasn't my, that wouldn't be my first hit of the turn. Or would it? It'd be your first hit of the turn because you missed the first one. Okay. Either way, it's dead. It was dead at 15 at points anyway. They only have 11. So there's one Bullywug left, and there's an incapacitated giant frog. That makes it Corey's turn. Okay. So I'm going for the last Bullywug. Okay, we're killing him? Yeah, we're going for it. Okay. Um, so that's a 24. And I do 
11 damage on the, on that one. You kill him. Okay. And then I guess the giant frog's the last thing that's left. Yep. All right. So you're going to stride over and just put it out of its misery? Yeah. We're not even going to bother with the damage. It can't even defend itself from you. <laughs> okay. It has, uh, I got 15 as my attack roll. Yeah, okay, you hit it. And so then it's it, it had one hit point. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it was very badly damaged. Okay, that ends the combat in this particular inner ward. Mm -hmm. There are bodies everywhere. Lizard folk, bullywugs, there's dead cultists that you guys mostly made. <laughs> um, Resmir is nowhere to be seen, though. And there's a big scorch mark from where you were when you picked the hammer up. Okay. So. Well, it, wouldn't that be where I'm still standing? Yeah, I don't I suppose think you moved. I, I didn't move. A fire around you. <laughs> All right. There's a bunch of experience here. Um, oh, God, math. And you were vastly outnumbered, even though the challenge rating was low, so I'm going to boost it a little bit. And I'm guessing we don't get the ones that died because... Of a, the explosion. Yeah. What? The ones that, because I'm guessing some of them passed out from. Everything that you see, other than the lizard folk, you killed. The lizard folk are dead. Some of them are. Oh. There was a giant battle there. What did you think happened? I, I snapped the, I thought the hammer killed a bunch of them. That was leaky. I didn't kill any lizard folk. Intentionally. Intentionally, <laughs> you were there. Is Snapjaw still alive? Uh, you, you don't know. You have to search the compound for him. Oh, I was going to do an investigation check, but I'll wait. Okay, so there's a thousand experience there for the lot of you. For the role play and also for the combat. So a thousand even. Can I do an investigation what? check to see if Snapjaw is still in the area? Or, like, investigate yeah, the okay, bodies so to see if it, one of them is Snapjaw. We should yeah, search for treasure, too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that too. Search for from treasure. the bullywugs? Um, mostly from... From the lizard people. Cultists. And the cultists. And the... Yeah, the bully tower. The bully logs don't have anything. Okay, so it, the, the castle is much quieter, although you can still hear fighting off in farther spots and parts. And it's mostly the snarling of lizard folk and the screaming of bully logs. So at this point, you're not directly threatened. So what do you want to do? Do you want to go into Resumer's Tower? Do you want to go into the keep? Do you want to search elsewhere? Uh, I want to do an investigation check to see if I can find any evidence of where Resumer went. I have a vendetta against him. And I Her. Three. Her. A three? Yeah. It's not enough to see through all the mud and churned footprints. Although the hammer is still emanating that picture of a window into another world into your head. Okay. So you just... You, doesn't quite make sense yet. Did an investigation check of 14 to see if the bodies within our little area... Okay. One of them was Snapjaw. None of them were Snapjaw. So... There's only a handful of lizard bodies. None of them are Snapjaw. Want to go investigate the tower? We're at the foot of it. We might as well. Yeah. Okay. How are you entering the tower? Through the door? I'm just asking. You guys have interesting ideas <laughs> about ingress, so... <laughs> I thought... I don't Do know. Do you want to use the rope? I like, grapple hook through one of the windows up above or something. Well, if the door's open and it's unguarded, why, why wouldn't we go through the door? Great question. Let's go back to the beginning of this entire cast. <laughs> no, because then I you lose went my to the garbage disposal. Okay, so you're going into what, that's section one. What one L? I don't know. Uh, the map's over there. So this is the chapel. You're on level one. You're on ground level right now. So this chapel has been um, consecrated to serve diff many different religions over the time. Uh, but right now, there is a shrine to Tiamat in the center, adorned with a handsome wooden statue of a dra of the Dragon Queen, crafted by unknown craftsmen. Um, but the worksmanship is surprisingly good, but most of the visages bear a stronger resemblance to lizard folk than to dragons. Um, that's the only obvious thing in here. And also, there's nobody in here. Other than you guys. All right, I'm going to roll an investigation Third check. Second. Okay, what are we investigating? Um, I'm going to investigate... We'll start with the statues. Sure. I got a three. Okay, so it seems like it's a pretty good statue to you, although you're disgusted by all the dragons because worms are gross. Worms are gross. I'm going to do an investigation check on the, the statue. Does that mean you're just going to smash it to pieces? No, I'm going to walk up and touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Do an actual investigation. Twelve. Twelve? Okay, so it seems like it's made very well. I don't know. 
These were all just like standing around the statue now, like a bunch of morons rubbing it. Um, investigation of 14 to check the rest of the room for any signs of where Rosemir might have gone. Okay, Cesario doesn't join your weird wood rubbing party and she <laughs> checks out. Uh, there is a door at the back of this room that opens into another one. It's a wooden door and you hear nothing behind it. Uh, stealth of 18 to creak open the door. Uh, there's a bunch of trash on the floor here. So you f apparently found the storeroom with a bunch of other trash that was just dumped recently in here. Anything good in the trash? I don't know. Probably not. 23. There's some broken stools, rotted altar cloths, and corroded icons. Nah. So there's some other doors that open off into it. Um, one opens onto stairs that go up. Another one opens off into a long hallway. Um, yeah, that's that. So we're, and one more opens up north of you. So that opens into area P. Let's go in the long hallway. Long hallway? Uh, I'd say we go up. Mm, I always like clearing a floor before I move to the next floor. Yeah, but this is so big. Why don't we clear the tower? Okay, so you're going upstairs. So that means we're looking at level two map now. And that is a library. Ooh. There's oh, lots of books stacked on shelves that don't necessarily look well made. They look like they're made from reclaimed wood. Um, and the books are kind of stacked and sorted haphazardly. There are several tables that are just pushed up against the walls, and there's tons of open books there. Is there any kind of book that you'd want to search through? Um, I want to do a search for spell books. Okay. And I did an investigation check of 10 to see if there's one that's got anything about, like, learning dragon. Okay. An investigation of 10? Yeah. Okay. What did you do? Uh, 10 as well. Okay. Wow, that's not very good. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no spell books, right? But Cesaria does find a book on Draconic script. It's very old. It's dusty and nasty looking. So you have no idea the accuracy of it. But are you looking for a cipher for the dragon alphabet? Kinda, yeah. Something to teach me. Yay, papers! So, although none of you actually speak dragon, Cesaria can probably break the code now, assuming it's not a newer version of the language or that the dragon has worked in some tricks into it. Other than that, books are heavy and they're not worth a whole lot. And also, 30% of your party can't read them very well. <clears throat> so... I can read five letters. That'll get you through five letters. <laughs> so, That'll get you right. through There are stairs ten. to go farther up from here, and there are also several doors that open up off of this particular library room. Apparently you're leading. I'm on the hunt for resume. Okay, do what you want to do. If you want to go up, we can go up. We're going to go up. Okay, we're climbing up, up and away. But yeah. We're not Superman. No. No, you're not. We're just a zealot. Um, so this is an office. The third floor of the old chapel has been converted to living quarters. Um, everything is draped in red and purples. And it's obvious that people don't come up here very often. This is the, the living space of one particular individual. Um, all of the, the furniture is lavish. Like really, really well made. Um, and it doesn't look like anything like the rest of the furnishing that you saw in the lizard folks rooms or in the muddy barracks that you guys stormed. Or in the garbage tower. Um, so there's a desk. There's uh, several small tables stacked with inventories and reports. There's four beautiful but uncomfortable wooden chairs. And there are two matched onyx carvings of black dragons that flank the top of the staircase. Um, I'd like to go investigate the desk. Okay. Beat me to it. You can't read anything in there anyways. I only got an eight though. <laughs> okay. So she's going. ruffling through all the papers and everything. I'm going to go rifle through the desk. Okay. I got a four. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think there's anything really worth it here. Um, what else? Cesaria? She's the only one that reads Dragon. It makes the most sense for her to investigate. Mm -hmm. Also, her investigation. Twelve. Webinars. Twelve is enough to find this script of paper <sighs> sitting amongst the rest. Just put that away so I didn't lose it. Ah. Um, there are several doors to open up off of this particular room, too. Just tag me along. Is there anything else you want to investigate in the room, or do you want to keep moving on? I want to investigate the onyx statues. Okay. Onyx is a stone, right? Yes. I'm going to roll a history check on it. Okay. 
18. 18 is enough to recognize dwarven craftsmanship. These are very well-made black dragon statues, and the kind of dwarf that would carve something like that has obviously been corrupted. But they still did a good job. The thing is, even though they're probably worth a fortune, they're about 400 pounds each. They're huge. Oh, man. Yeah. So somebody had a lot of onyx that they could carve to get this done for a resin mirror. Onyx is tough to carve, too. Yep. It's a hard stone. So probably can't take them with you. You could smash them out of spite, though, I guess. No? Oh, okay. Yeah. I figured I'd present the opportunity to just wantonly destroy beautiful things. I got an 18 on an attack roll. So you smash one, but it doesn't topple over. It's too heavy. So you break the head off or something. Yep. Okay. I feel better. Great. I'm glad we worked this out. Slightly better. I'm um, glad we broke things. There's doors that open up off of this one, but there's no more stairs that go up. It's a three-floor three floor tower. All right, so let's pick the door on the furthest right. Okay, so that is a sleeping chamber. There's a, be a large bed, two wardrobes, and a standing mirror, and an armor stand with a spare suit of scale mail dominating this room. Um, one of the wardrobes is open, and you can see a bunch of purple robes on the inside. You should probably take scale mail. I don't know who would use it, though. Probably you. Well, it's, it's fit for a half dragon. You're the only person who would fit into it. Okay. Okay, before we go any deeper into the castle, before we go back down to the ground floor, do you guys want to do anything else here? There were two wardrobes. There's the bed. There's the um, scale mail stand. So we took the scale mail. Okay. Um, Corey's going to take it. Okay. Um, and then I'll search a wardrobe. Do you want to search the one other? of them yeah, is open. Search. I'll search the other. I'll search the closed one. Okay. Especially since my investigation's been awful. I only got a six. I got a fifteen. Unfortunately, it's locked. Are you perceiving or investigating? Investigating. It's locked. Uh, I'm gonna run a pers or not of twelve. Okay. Uh, you're not able to pick the lock with that roll. So. Hmm. Want to try again? Sure. It's gonna take a while, but okay. Time of the essence here, or is this particular box of essence? The time is kind of of the okay. essence. Okay, all right. Wait. So, what? I'm going to smash the lock open. Okay. So I was asking you. 21. Great, okay, so you're able to knock the door off of it. Unfortunately, acid explodes out of it, doing 25 damage to everybody in the area. You can make a successful DC 15 dexterity saving throw to take half the damage, but... Leaky has disadvantage on the saving throw because he's the one that did it. I got dirty 20. So you take half the damage. You take 13 damage. 13. Yeah, I got an 8. So you take 25 acid damage. Did we, um, did that count as a full rest when we woke up from that thing or no? Yeah. Oh, it did. Okay, good. Because I'd be down oh, to one did? health. Oh, okay. I know that I got my spell slots back, but I didn't know if oh, that sorry, was. Oh, sorry. I thought that was implied that you guys came back at full health. Okay. You said Cesaria oh, okay. specifically sorry. came back at full health. All right. So anyway, there's a lot of damage. A lot of the stuff inside of that is ruined. There were clothes and some like silken robes and stuff that's destroyed by it. But there is something in there um, that is not. And it is a two-foot-tall statue of a black dragon made again of onyx with um, ruby eyes and diamond teeth. And it's perched atop a heap of now acid-washed treasure. But the acid doesn't affect the stone. So everything else has been kind of ruined by the acid, but this thing is weighs about 20 pounds. It's not huge, but it's exquisitely made. I'll take it. Okay. Since I'm standing right in front of it. Okay, so let's add the black dragon statue. And that's it for this room. All right, let's go in the middle room. The middle room. Page what? 37. What do you mean the middle room? Because we went to the one on the far right, so we're going to go to the one oh, on the next right. The O. Three O. I don't have the map. That's the only one you haven't been into. Okay. So this chamber is where um, Resimir must have used it occasionally, but it's bare. The only decoration is a black stripe painted on the far wall when you come in. I'd like to investigate the black stripe. Okay. Um, Thirteen. It's very finely painted. 
Moving. Otherwise, there's just the door and then the room, and it's pretty bare. Okay. Um, I'm going to run a religion check, but at disadvantage because I don't have a religion. Okay. To see if I can understand the purpose. You do have a religion. Well, I do now. Yeah. But I still don't understand my religion. Oh, okay. All right. Fair? Okay, sure. Never thought a DM would argue against disadvantage. <laughs> A two. And a 20. <laughs> I got a two and a natural 20. You think to yourself, the Black Stripe would be a pretty good metal band name. <laughs> but that's not useful to the situation at all. No. Okay, so there's just the door and then the room and then the Black Stripe. Okay. And then, um, do we want to go back down to the second floor and investigate a little bit more? Into the library? Um, yep. There were there was a, a couple of rooms off of it that we never checked out because we were going straight up. That's true. There were, yep. You guys were in, in what was like, the books were stacked. It's it's library-ish. Um, and then there's a, there a small room off of that, and there's a larger room um, off that that would be labeled 2N on your map. Go into 2N. Okay. So 2N's door is barricaded. You're not able to open it. <laughs> With a normal push? With even a heavy push. Locked. You can squint at me all you want. I'm just telling you what, what the adventure says. Uh, perception check of 26. You can hear ragged breathing inside. Frightened breathing. Do you want me to try... S well, Frightened it's breathing. Well, and it's barricaded from the other side. Which could be a prisoner, or it could be some, but something that... Or it could be a monster. Or it could be Rosemary. It's possible, Yes. And my sleight of hand ain't going to do squat. I can try to help you on your strength check. That's true. Are you just going to all help him push the door aside? Sure. So you get to have 3d20? If we bend that rule to its, to its limit? limit, yeah. Here. So Leaky's going to push. I guess Corey's helping and Cesaria's uh, moral encouragement here. <sighs> wow. That's a 12. <laughs> So you're able to push it a little ways, and inside you hear people yell, We don't want to fight, just go away. We, we, That's not mine. We don't want to fight either. Then go away. Who are you? They tell you that they are, they, they give you a bunch of names, but it just kind of flies by. They're not people you've ever heard of before. Why are you hiding? Because we used to tend the library. Go away, we don't want to die. We won't kill you. Liars, go away. We're not going to open the door, you psychos. We saw what you did to the Bullywogs from the window. <laughs> the Bullywogs were attacking us. Persuasion no, you of attacked 15. us in our castle. Persuasion of 15 to get them to open the door. They're not opening the door. It's barricaded anyway. Alright. You invaded, you invaded us in our castle. We were doing our own thing. You came in. You killed our guard drakes. You turned the lizard Where folk into Where did Resumir monsters. go? I don't know. Probably back down in the dungeon. 16. It sounds about reasonable. This person's panicked, so they're going to say whatever they can to get you to go away. All right, let's just leave them. Okay. Goodbye. They, said, they said probably down to the dungeon. Yep. So. I'm, I'm going to follow Corey's advice here. Okay, so you're just not going to kick the door in and kill him just in case? All right, fine. Goodbye. Okay. It's going to come back to bite us. Um, it is the honorable thing to do, to not kill people who are barricaded into a room. It's true. <laughs> and they didn't seem that they were telling the truth. They didn't shoot at you. This time. This time. If we, they shoot us later, then they die. Okay, so there's that one little room there, 2M, and then there's the stairs down. Okay, 2M. 2M is a contains a small table and two chairs with a couple books stacked up on top. It's a reading room. A mouse sits in the corner. What, what's on the books? Can I have the pet mouse? Books, dragon lore, stuff. What? Can I grab the mouse? It hisses at you. Make a dexterity saving throw. 22. The mouse tries to scuttle away, but you scoop it up. <laughs> <laughs> I stuff it in my pocket and zip it shut. You know, when Lenny did that, <laughs> he had, a, mouse, he had a, a pocket full of mouses for a long time. <laughs> I then... Proceed to stroke the pocket. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then there's just the stairs down from here. I have a here. mouse! Alright, and then that's the tower, right? Yep. That, uh, there's, there's one O, 
if we're clearing and we're being completionist, there's one O and one N and one M. O connects N and M underneath the stairs, so you'd have to go into O. Okay. Let's go into, you want to do? Let's go into O. So this long, narrow room is used as an archery range. Um, it overlooks the causeway through narrow slits. And in case of an attack, archers could man it, but unfortunately you didn't come from that direction. You came from the stinky direction. <laughs> so it's currently abandoned. There's some arrows lying on the floor, but there's otherwise nothing of value. So this hallway connects underneath the stairs to areas N and M. So there's an open door at the end. All right, let's go to the next room. Okay. Um, area N is a rectory, and it was originally used as living quarters, and there are um, people's like religious paraphernalia, dragon cult stuff lying here on a couple beds that have been shoved up against the walls, but there's nobody in this particular room, and it connects to Area M. Investigation of 18. Anything of interest? Uh, in what, Area N? Mm -hmm. Um... Nothing of particular interest. Okay. It's just their their life detritus. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. To M? Yep. M is the garbage dump that you tried to come through the last time with the bar stools and stuff. But looking at it from this angle, you can see that people fled through this room. The footsteps go in the other direction. So they scrambled over the stuff to get out of here. And that's the tower. So there's an area that opens up off P, and that heads towards Q and R. S and T, which is where the fighting with the lizard folk continues, and the bullywugs, and whatever cultists may remain. So I guess our decision is, we know that there was a weird thing on the top of the one tower. Do we want to check out the other towers? The keep? Yeah, we probably should head towards the keep first, and then... You guys kind of have, have the run of the land at this point. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to end the episode there. So you, next time you guys are going to explore the keep, and probably finish... Demolishing the castle. Brick by brick? Yeah. Stone by stone. Stone by stone. I do have Thunder Wave. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Is that effectively what happened oh, to everyone? I have Thunder Smite. Is that effectively what happened to everyone when I regained the hammer? Something like Thunder that. Thunder Wave? Something like that, yeah. The mechanics were roughly approximate. Yeah. Okay, so that is it for now. And then we gotta go do this. It's save... However the hell you say that. I don't know how you say that. At Not my gate. job, no. Well, he can't read. He's of no help. No. In character. Drarier, or say drarier at the gra at the gate. Drarier, okay. like your butt? No. That would be derrier. Dre oh. Yeah, drarier. Drarier. Drarier? So I wonder if that black line is the gate. I don't know. We also know there's dungeons. It's true. So, we'll explore some more. We'll do some exploring. If we have to, we can always come back up to this to that room. Yeah. Okay. Leaky's gonna say drarier at every f***ing door now. <laughs> Are you okay. a door? Are you a door? Are you a door? Actually, Are you a door? Let me see that for one sec. So, join us in two weeks for the conclusion of Castle Neritar and, uh... And the campaign. And Well, no, not the campaign. No, not the campaign? This is chapter 8 of 9, I think, or 7 of 9. In huh? Books. But the next two are shorter. This is the big dungeon crawl that precedes the end of all things. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm exhausted. So am I. And I did that without my notes. Wow. It's impressive. Don't forget I'm at school next time. I am Travis. I am the dungeon master and producer of the podcast. I am Kyle Newcomb. I play Leaky, exile of the Golden Tur clan. I am Jen. I play Cesario, the rogue cleric. I am Lindsay. I play Corey Gothi Kanathi. Thank you for listening. Bye! Bye. The Cannon Fodder Diecast is a D&D 5e actual play podcast. The intro and outro tracks are composed by Kevin McLeod and used within their Creative Commons licenses. For more info, visit www.cannonfodderpodcast.com or follow us on Twitter at Cannon Fodder Pod. 
and that's C-A-N-O-N. If you like what we're doing, please leave a review on iTunes, or consider supporting us on the Cannon Fodder Podcast Patreon page. And thank you for listening. It is done, Anam. The Dever Galiki has claimed the hammer here at the roots of the world tree. But is he Mott or Mog? I pray your all-seeing eye has guided my hand truly.